Mr. Tony Bell, let's begin with you. From the, from the British Raj to Amrit Kal. <laughs> Thank you. From the British Raj to Amrit Kal, we're talking about two different worlds uh, connected by cricket. The world has changed and cricket has changed. What sort of parallels and divergences do you see? Right, well, thank you, Saki, for that <laughs> introduction. Um, and can I say, first of all, it's a great pleasure to be here again. Great pleasure to be with my, my good friend, uh, Jay Shankar some of whom I have enormous respect, and to see Kevin again after quite a long time. The last time I saw him was when I welcomed him and the English team into Downing Street after they won the Ashes in 2005, right. yep. where I can, I just said to Kevin, he was easily the most sober person in that team. Um, <laughs> the best actor. <laughs> ah, that's what it was. Um, so, look, I think the, the, the change that's happening in the world today is... You know, people talk about whether power is shifting east. I think it's not so much shifting as today power is going to be shared. Right? There is no doubt that the, the rise of, of China, the rise of India now has, has changed uh, geopolitics. You've got Indonesia now becoming an increasingly powerful country. I think the Philippines is going to make great strides. Vietnam, um, its economy has, has um, uh, surged enormously over these these past years so I think we're in a we are definitely in a in a new era but I think there are several things that are interesting about it that need reflecting it's true that the the great geopolitical competition will probably revolve around the relationship between the United States and China um, but here's the thing which is interesting I think over the last two years, under President Biden, and I'm not sure everyone in America sees it this way, but this is how I see it as an outsider. America has re-emerged as the strongest power in the world by a long way, both by dint of its economy, its military, its resources, its technology. As China has faltered over the COVID policy and frankly, over aspects of its economic policy. I think America's dominance is very clear. That's the first thing. The second thing is that although the East is much more powerful, which is why I, I, I say for sure power is to a degree shifted but has still got to be shared, whilst it's clear that the East is very strong, it's not just America that is strong. Europe is still strong. It's still the largest commercial market in the world. I think the conflict in Ukraine has, has seen Europe and NATO regain some of its, its momentum and its purpose, um, and the UK to a, a degree too as, a, as an ally. And so I think the real challenge today is how you make sense of this shifting geopolitics. And in that, I think the position of India is absolutely critical because the progress of India in these last years has been remarkable and extraordinary, and I think the position of India now, this is again my view as an outsider, is potentially more powerful than it's ever been. Uh, with the G20, this is in a way a, a, a demonstration of its, of its authority on the global stage, but increasingly around the world when countries are worried about whether they have to choose between the USA and China, I think India is a country seen by many as, a, as an objective friend, and I think it's got the opportunity now to lead the global south in a way that's never been true before. But your point of power being shared and not shifted so much, is the West prepared to share that power? Because I do not see a lot of enthusiasm on United Nations Security Council reform to start with. Yeah, but the West has got no option. And the, the trouble with the UN Security Council reform, which of course should happen, I mean, it's absurd that India is, you've got a situation where India is not a permanent member, but you could say that about other countries as well. But leave aside that, because the problem always with reforming the UN Security Council is how do you get consensus? But the West has got no option but to share the power. The question is how you make sense of international diplomacy in this new world. 